Hi, this is Matt. Welcome to Clay All Day. Today, we're going to make a Cheetos bag on the pottery wheel. So to make the Cheetos bag, I'm going to want to start with about 8 pounds of clay. I'm weighing it out here, and then I'm going to start wedging it. Spiral wedging is my preferred way to wedge, but you can use whatever method works for you. I'm rounding off the sides, and then I'm going to rock the bottom so that it'll be an even hit when I transfer it to the wheel. So. With anything on the wheel, first you want to join your clay to the wheel head, then add water. And the first step is going to just be to cone it up and get this clay centered. Usually with my first cone, I'll bring it pretty high with this amount of clay and bring it down. I'm using some somewhat soft clay, uh, but once I get it up one or two times, then it's going to be a more modest sized cone like this, and I'll bring it back down and just make sure it's really evenly centered and ready to throw. And then I'm going to just place my thumb in the center and kind of identify the center of the clay. And then I'll open it up by pushing my right thumb in. Next, you move to your pulls. I'm gonna do my initial pull with the knuckle here. It's just much stronger if you throw with a fist. And I'll bring it up. Because I'm making a cylinder, for me, I pretty much have to collar it in after each pull. That's just sort of how I do it. I wish I didn't have to collar it in, but that's what I do. So here's my second pull. I'm going to bring it up a little bit higher, thin, thinning it out each time, bringing it higher, and uh, bring it back into the center collar. Add some water to your final pull. It's getting relatively tall. It's not, height is not so much the important thing here, but you need it big enough that you can make the bag form. If you look at any chip bag, it's just a plastic or mylar or some kind of material uh, tube that's kind of flattened out, so that's what I'm making here, a cylinder. Once I have my pulls done, I'm going to go with a plastic rib, remove any of the slip and the throwing marks. I'm actually making it a little bit wider here. And then because I know that it's a little thicker on the bottom half, I'm gonna remove some of the clay with a quick trim with the loop tool. Remove the clay at the bottom because I'm basically almost done throwing here. And then I'm going to, once again, remove those trimming marks from the loop tool, smooth it out. And then the final move, because I want people to know that I made this on the wheel, is I'm going to add a finger mark from the bottom to the top. And I do that just with a slow rotation of the wheel and just slowly move my finger up and add that detail. And I love this. It really does come through in the final piece. And so for me, it's an important part. Take my wire tool, I'm gonna to cut it off. dry my hands, move the piece to the side. Next step, clean up that wheel head. I'm using a hydro bat so the clay is relatively dry right on the surface. And then I quickly invert the cylinder and take a needle tool and cut out the bottom. A little bit of extra clay there, so take that out too. You can take out whatever you need and then pinch it together. And this uh, is gonna be the bottom of your chip bag. So you could score it, although it's pretty wet clay, just through it, so I'm gonna just pinch it together, smooth it out, and uh, you know, call it good. Just you wanna make sure it's joined, and then flip it, and put a fist inside, and punch it down, and really make sure that bottom is joined. I can turn it over and flip it pretty much immediately after throwing because I removed all the slip 
before I added that finger mark. So the piece is relatively dry. Now I'm adding in the kind of chip form, the bag form, and that's pretty much it for the throwing part. Now we're moving on to the decoration. So I'm going to roll out some coils here, somewhat thin, and these are going to uh, form the lettering. Starting out with the Cheetos lettering. For me, the decoration is all sculptural relief style on these. Uh, I use the glaze to kind of accentuate that. Here's a sped up version of making those letters. Wouldn't want to bore you with the uh, real time of that. And I'm not showing it here, but I do score the back of all of those. And then I'm going to go ahead and score the chip bag so that I can get these joined. This is all basically, you know, you could throw your bag and wait a day, you know, dry it out a little bit, but I just usually do it immediately. I like the immediacy, immediate, immediacy of it. I like that it's somewhat wet and flexible and I'm just working with, you know, what I can do in the moment. You can see the bag still has quite a bit of flex to it. And I can alter it if I need to as I add these kind of decorative elements. So I've got the Cheetos letters on there. This is a crunchy bag as opposed to Flaming Hot or any other sort of Cheetos. And uh, next step, adding those smaller letters. A little bit of slip never hurts. Sometimes I use water, but Really, you know, slip is better. Get those clay particles in there. Just making sure it's all joined. Okay, now we get into the fun stuff. The next step is going to be making Chester. The famous Chester Cheetah from, from the Cheetos bags. You know, I think um, if Wikipedia is right. Uh, Chester was introduced when I was a kid, so I probably watched these ads thinking he'd been around forever, but he was a new character and it's just kind of stuck with me. So here I'm kind of adding the legs, the arms, those high top sneakers he wears, putting his, he's only got four fingers as far as I can tell. There's his skateboard at the end there um, under his uh, left foot and then score once again and score your sculptural relief. It's kind of coming apart in pieces to go on. If you decide to make one of these, I mean, you could really do whatever you want. You could, you can really have fun with this. My sculpting is somewhat rough, but I play into that with the glazing. So I think in the end, it all kind of works together and I'm happy with it. You know, it's really, it's your it's your bag if you make one, so go for it however you want. Because I am working pretty wet, I have the chance to alter it, change it over time. So I, I do like to make the pieces flat and then add them. I just find that easier to work. Um, now I'm adding some of those Cheetos in. If you look at the Cheetos bag, there are some large uh, Cheetos in comparison to Chester kind of floating around there. And I'm, I'm going to add some texture. I'm just using this bamboo scoring tool I actually got, uh, I believe, from Sandbow Studio online. Um, so, you know, I'm a big believer in whatever you've got in the studio that's going to be, you know, work for you. Simple tools are often the best. I love bamboo tools. Wish I had more of them. I, and then I'm using the other side of that bamboo tool to kind of add what would be the... Uh, the spots on his cheetah skin. The final step is going in with a uh, kind of a plastic tip sculpture tool, adding some details, cleaning up the letters, just making sure it's kind of how I want it to be. And then here at the end, got one final uh, cheeto to add that's over the body. And uh, that's basically it for the sculptural relief. That's the fun part for sure.
and then give it one little squeeze in. You can see it's still pretty wet. It's maybe 20 minutes after I threw it at this point. And uh, just I just go right in and just do it. Have fun with it. Okay, I'm not going to show loading it in the bisque kiln here, but it is bisque fired. I usually bisque fire to around 06 in an electric kiln. And the next step is going to be adding the glaze. So I'm mixing up this kind of runny glaze that I have. And uh, the first step, just pour it right inside, make sure we get that inside glazed. Just kind of your classic move with any vessel. I really think of myself as a vessel maker and coming up with this idea a few years ago of making Cheetos bags and other chip bags, I just thought, well, a bag is a vessel, it carries things, it holds things, and uh, let me make the ceramic version. So I just layer that glaze on pretty thick. It's a glaze that really promotes running and oozing, but uh, it doesn't tend to really run off unless I put it on super thick. Uh, because it's a sculptural relief, missed a few areas, so I'm going to kind of just dot on some more glaze. And then, of course, got to clean the bottom. Okay, the next step, I'm taking uh, some velvet underglaze. I believe this is flame orange. I've done these Cheeto bags in a variety of colors and glazes, uh, but for this video, I definitely wanted to make a orange one, kind of get that whole... Cheetos vibe for you. So I'm just covering everything inside too with that flame orange underglaze. Then it's ready to load in the kiln. I'm going to take it up to cone six in oxidation in my electric kiln here. And here's the final result. You can see that running that oozing, the orange really comes through. And if you notice that those, that finger line, that throwing line I added, is really uh, a part of the decorative element of the piece. And that's it. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.